Greetings, car family. Back again for another State of the Build episode here on the Peak Auto YouTube channel. My name's Emily Reeves. I'm your host for this series, and we've got a special one in store. This is a build you're not going to see anywhere else. You guys, we've got Chris from Be Us for Build, and his build is on another level. Let's shoot him a text. Chris, dude, I'm so excited to hear the story on this car. I can't imagine what was going through your head when you found it and decided to make it, it being a Lamborghini Huracan, into an off-road machine. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, you're crazy. Tell us the story of when you found the car. So excited to hear the rundown on this machine because, wow. Hey, Emily. First of all, thank you so much for having me on your show. So the Huracan, where we got this thing is uh, basically we were at one of our sponsor's shop when we were building our um, LS swapped Huracan, the, the drag racing car. We were at one of our sponsor's places, uh, Mullins Auto Parts, and they're like an auto parts kind of a, a part out company. And they had bought uh, this Huracan and another Huracan and parted, parted them all out. So all that was left on this guy was just this like really bare, um, chassis that was stripped all the way down did not have like any parts and I saw it sitting there and nobody was using it and I said hey man like I think we could build something really really crazy out of this uh, we might want to use it for an upcoming project and they said hey we'll totally sponsor you so Mullins Auto Parts sponsored us with the entire chassis for this build and uh, we shipped it out here and then it was the process of 3d modeling and and 3d scanning it to engineer uh, long travel suspension for it Oh my gosh, you guys are not messing around with this car. My goodness, so you're 3D scanning everything and, or maybe you already have and you've built a suspension for it. I'm curious, is it gonna be four wheel drive or is it gonna be kind of a pre-runner deal where it's only rear wheel drive? What's the story there? This car is insane, holy moly, dude. So we actually sent the chassis off to the engineer in the beginning and, and he did the, once he did the 3D scanning, then he, this is a guy that engineers like Baja 1000 uh, race trucks and he's got many, many years in the off-road racing game. I, I knew if we were gonna do a project like this and be successful that I couldn't guess and check my way through it. It would just take too much time. So I wanted to start with somebody that had years and years of knowledge. So uh, he designed all of the suspension and we, we said from the beginning that we wanted to just keep it rear wheel drive um, and it's meant to be racing in a lot of the races like the Baja races. Uh, the Mint 400 will be doing this year in December. Uh, that'll be basically the inaugural race that it's in. Uh, but because it is a Lamborghini, um, we, we have to, well, and we wanted a lot of power. We, we had to build it in, in such a way that it doesn't land specifically in a lot of classes. So unless racing organizations open up a class for us or give us a little bit of leniency. Like we're not out there to try and compete and be the first and win any prize money. We don't care about that. We just want to go out and have fun. And that's why we've been uh, working with the Mint 400 because they're all about just having fun. So they're gonna they're creating a class for us to be able to race in. Um, and so it's, but to answer your question, it is rear wheel drive. Uh, the four wheel drive system was just gonna add way, way too much complexity. And with the manual transmission, it's not really possible. Not with a manual transmission and an LS. Not quite yet, and I don't know if we want to be the first people to figure it out or not. Well, for the Baja style racing, you don't really need four wheel drive. Lots of those rigs are two wheel drive, right? And it's going to be a manual. So, are you going to do a TR6060 or a T56 behind that LS? I love LSs. I mean, I'm surrounded by them. I know the whole LS swap the world thing is hated by some, but dude, they're just such good engines. Oh my gosh. We'll put one in a Dotson. <laughs> I'm, I just am so stoked to see this build actually get put to use. It's just going to be insane. The long travel suspension, seeing like slow-mo video of this car launching over stuff, earth, when it's off-roading. That's going to be so stellar. Okay, so is the engine going to be in A then? Um, no power adder, no nitrous blowers, turbos, all the good stuff. Not multiple blowers. I shouldn't have put an S on that, but you know what I mean. So with the engine, we actually, uh, we don't need any power adders. So um, right now we just have a uh, stock LS1 out of our, uh, one of our Corvette project cars. And we're gonna be running this a little bit, doing demos and tests, and that's like 350, 400 horsepower. Uh, but we have a race engine being built. And this is some news for your channel that nobody knows about yet. So the Mullins Auto Parts, the guys that sponsored us with this chassis, they have a, a, literally a brother company. The owner of the brother makes Mullins race engines. 
and wait, the brother of the owner. Did I say the owner of the brother? Anyways, Mullins Race Engines, they uh, they make some amazing race engines. A lot of them are run in the dirt track, the circle uh, dirt track circle racing world. They're making us an engine right now that makes 800 horsepower naturally aspirated and revs out to 9,000 RPM. They are just screamers of an engine. And 900 horsepower is plenty, plenty, plenty for this build. We're honestly probably gonna have to turn it down um, so we don't start blowing up transmission parts. Leading back into the transmission, if you use like a T56, it, it, it is possible because you can use, uh, like I designed that single seater earlier this year that uses a T56. It makes for a really, really, really long package. So it would stick out to like behind the car. It would be out like back here. So you, it uses the manual trans axle out of a, um, this is a Graziano six-speed transaxle out of a Lamborghini Gallardo or an Audi R8. So it's the last of the Lamborghini uh, manuals. And it's one of the only Lamborghini parts in this whole build other than the chassis. <laughs> I'm a dork. Of course you're using a transaxle because the engine's in the back. You don't have space for a long transmission and those are um, configured to send a drive shaft to rear tires anyway. <sighs> I'm a dork, I'm sorry. Yes, transaxle sounds amazing and that engine combo sounds so sick i love high revving ls motors and mullins racing engines build sick stuff i'm aware oh my gosh that's so rad dude so have you done this type of racing before like the baja style rough terrain speed type of racing that's gonna be so cool can't wait that's a really good question. Um, we haven't done this type of racing before. Bees, Bees for Build is really focused for uh, many, many of our years uh, just on building. And we love building cars, but we also really love driving cars. And our audience has really let us know like, hey, we we love watching you build these amazing machines, but not, not being able to see them get used is kind of a letdown. We'd like to see it because I still have ev basically every single car I've ever built on the channel over the last six years. Um, and so we, you know, have made a turn into building cars that we can use a lot more. And that gets into this car because not only can we race it in things like the Mint and Baja, but also we're in Oregon and we have thousands and thousands of miles of logging roads that you can go drive on and have fun. And obviously can't do anything too sketchy, but it's, it's a place to go drive, a place to go film. There's plenty of places to just go jump off of stuff. And we have plenty of uh, OHV areas and stuff like that. So it, this type of build gives us the opportunity to drive in a lot more places around our state than um, some of the other um, motorsports that we've done. So we've been uh, actually really upping our, our drifting program just to spend time behind the wheel in an organized type of scene, uh, autocross this year as well. And uh, and then, and then so we're, we're just trying to practice and get a lot of wheel time so we're gonna feel more comfortable. But no, this is gonna be our first time uh, being a participant in, in an off-road type of race. So I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I know we're going to have fun and we're going to have fun driving this thing. I think failure is very likely because you can just, you break one small part and you're not going to finish a 400 mile race. It's very, very grueling on the vehicle. So I know that failure is uh, definitely a possibility, but as far as like the, the, the root engineering that's gone into this vehicle to make it what it is, I'm not worried about that at all because I, our engineer is super solid. So that kind of takes a lot of the, um, a lot of the worry off of my back because it's like in the end the vehicle is going to do the vehicle is going to do great and that's what we do we try and build the best things that we can so our game plan is if driving gets really hard we're just going to drive slower <laughs> i love that if you feel like you're going to break just slow down because it's more important to finish than to go hard and break and not finish at all i like it i approve of this plan Okay, so what are we doing right now on the build? Where are we in the build process? It looks like a car. Obviously, the engine's got to be swapped out, but you guys are going to be doing some testing with the current engine. So where are you right now in the build process? Where we've got to go from here, there's, there's still quite a lot of work that's got to be done. Uh, what I'm focused on is actually mocking up our axles so we can have, because uh, these are very, very custom axles that have to be done. So this is uh, some 3D printed stuff mixed with some PVC pipe and some other stuff is equals a mocked up axle that will go into here and we'll test our full like squat, like if the vehicle is to completely bottom out and then a full jump if the suspension is to completely hang, make sure that our axles are cool. And then I'm moving on to the cooling system. So we got a shipment of stuff from uh, Mishimoto here and we'll get our, our, our peak fluids in there for you. And uh, we're gonna be uh, putting a radiator right back here, right in front of that rear uh, window so we can't see anything. And then after that, it is a little bit of plumbing for the fuel system, all of the electrical, Holly PDM, Holly standalone ECU and then we will have a running and driving machine. 
Oh yeah, and we also need to do uh, the, the uh, plumb a clutch and a brake and, and a shifter and an accelerator pedal. So there's a few, few small things, but sooner than later, we'll be running and driving. We are going to try and be at the Gambler 500 doing Hoopty Cross June 25th. So not very far from now. Um, we got to try and have this thing running and all of those things done. And then uh, about two weeks after that, we are going to go uh, test the Mint course out in the desert. So the owners of the Mint have been kind enough to let us do a test run out in the desert of Las Vegas. So we're going to drive 20 hours out to Vegas and try and drive a 100 mile loop of the course and make sure that the vehicle uh, holds up to it. Or if, if not, we break it, we fix it and we go back out again. Um, and we will keep doing that till uh, till we're ready. And then um, and then. And then we build the body. Oh yeah, so once we've proved that the vehicle works, we need to build, you know, body and lights and things like that, make it street legal, so. Um, but first, first step, getting it all running, getting it all tested, getting it all proven out, and then we're gonna make it look pretty, which will probably be like a week before SEMA. Knowing us, it'll be like the night before we have to leave for SEMA, we'll decide to build a whole new body. <laughs> You're all, and the radiator's gonna go right here at the back window where we can't see anything. That's funny. Oh my goodness. Mocking up the axles has got to be intense because once you send those PVC pieces off and say, this is the length we need, these are the dimensions we need, you got to cross your fingers because that event's coming up. Dang, that is going to be so awesome. Oh my goodness. The Mint 400 people sound pretty legit. You're making me want to build something like this. All of our stuff's just like on the street, you know? I mean, I've raced Roxy a little bit, but not much. She's a daily. Uh, dang, dude, this is so awesome. Oh my gosh. There's gonna be a list of stuff that's gonna come up that you're gonna be like, oh geez. That's how all builds are, right? And I didn't realize you were gonna put a body on it. I mean, it's kind of a shame to cover up that uh, like exoskeleton vibe it's got going on, but I'm sure you'll make it so badass. Dude, thank you so much for taking the time to make these videos back and forth with me. I cannot wait to see this build unfold and actually see you hitting the dirt in this thing. It's gonna be so, so legendary. Mad kudos to you guys. Mad kudos. You're awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Well, thanks so much, Emily, for having us on the show. I really, really do appreciate it. And uh, I can't wait to see you soon at some local events. I hope you have a really fun time building in the meantime, and um, maybe maybe we'll see you on the drag strip pretty soon. See ya. Man, I cannot wait to see the Jumpicon in action. Thank you guys so much for watching this series. I absolutely adore producing it for our friends at Peak Auto. And the ability to do quick interviews with some of the top YouTubers on some of their most hot builds is such an honor. So huge thanks to Chris for taking the time and be sure to subscribe and comment below which YouTuber you want to see featured next. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.